Greetings, Pirate staff. I want to take a moment as we close this year to say a few things before you go. We started the school year with a long-awaited, much-deserved new teacher pay scale. Instruction was off to a strong start, and our students were working hard to show growth every day. Our buildings were looking better and better, and we opened a new competition gym. This year brought its challenges but we never imagined what we were in for as we broke for spring break. COVID-19 became a household name and we began to learn of the power of a nationwide pandemic that would force us into changes we never could have predicted. Closure of school buildings, cancellation of sports, prom, bridging ceremonies, the list goes on. We realized quickly that we had to adapt to a brand new way of educating our children, teaching kids with no one in the building. Operating school without face-to-face -face instruction was complicated, and once again, teachers and school staff showed us what they are made of. We fed kids with no cafeteria. We taught kids with no classrooms and we got them to school with no buses. It was hard work and it wasn't perfect. I know you feel like there were many unmet needs, but I want you to take a minute and be proud of the work you could do under the circumstances. You showed us that when push comes to shove, you find a way. Our ACISD team band together and met students' needs. The creative decision-making of teams across the district under these unusual circumstances is to be commended. As we head to the fall, we want to share the scenarios we are considering, knowing that we will continue to follow Governor Abbott's guidance as it's released. One, in a perfect world, we would return in August with all staff and students in buildings. I'm not counting on this because guidance we have so far doesn't lend itself to this option. Two, a more extreme scenario would be that the governor keeps schools closed and we resume distance learning. Three, a final scenario would be that the governor allows students to return to school, but only at 50% occupancy, so as to maintain social distancing measures. Well, we know how to handle scenarios one and two. We would use the summer to make improvements to our distance learning instruction. Scenario three would allow for a blend of face-to-face -face learning and distance learning. We are currently looking at options to implement this hybrid model of instruction. Principals will be reaching out to small focus groups of teachers to provide input on the challenges involving this model. We plan to roll out a plan for fall instruction by mid-June, 
that would support the hybrid model should the governor decide that this is the best method for our fall return. I know that you have likely heard that TEA is encouraging schools to consider using an intersessional calendar for 2020-21 school year, which resembles a year-round school calendar. It essentially bills in days related to COVID-19 closures in case of an outbreak of the virus. We know that the redesign of a year-round calendar requires input from many stakeholders and that a decision to move this direction too quickly can be problematic. Many districts across the state and in our region feel the same way. And so we plan to stay with our traditional calendar for the year to come. We can make adjustments as needed throughout the year by providing distance learning or in the event of a major outbreak of the virus, we can sustain a brief closure and adjust the calendar as needed. Please know that information does tend to change daily. We are staying in the loop moment to moment and will continue to monitor this information and adjust accordingly. I hope this summer provides you the opportunity to do some fun things and re-energize your body and your mind. You deserve it. For those of you retiring, I wish you the best. I hope you take great joy in this next phase of life. Enjoy your summer vacation and see you again in August.